so there's this debate that's been going on among bass players for at least 60 years, and it's not going to stop today. The debate is the whole jazz bass versus P bass thing. And that's not something that we're going to resolve. But what's interesting to me is whenever that discussion comes up, team jazz bass always likes to point out that a jazz bass is so versatile in its tone that it can sound like a P bass. And that's the interesting concept I want to explore with you today. Can you actually make a jazz bass sound like a P bass? And then maybe the deeper question is, what does a P bass or a jazz bass actually sound like? What is it about these iconic instruments that make them what they are? I'm excited to explore this concept with you today, and I think it's just gonna be fun. So here we go. So before we get into trying to make the jazz bass sound like a P bass, I think it's important to talk about what makes these instruments different from each other. If we disregard just how they look, I think the biggest things to me are the neck and the pickups. And I think the neck makes the biggest difference on how the instrument feels to the musician. And the pickups, they make the biggest difference on how the instruments sound to your ears. And both are important and I also think that they are paired. I think that a jazz bass neck with jazz bass pickups pair really nicely and a P bass style neck with P bass pickup pairs really nicely. So let's talk about the neck for a second. If you look at the neck in comparison, this is a thinner neck at the end and it tapers in a more extreme way, whereas the P bass is a little bit wider at the end, it tapers less, it's a little bit flatter, and the jazz bass is a little bit rounder. And I think this neck shape is important to mention because I think it's a big part of what makes these instruments feel like what they are these different neck shapes influence my playing. When I'm playing my P bass, I find that I play ideas that are more grounded and less risky. I play lines, I play grooves, I play very focused, fundamental, supportive sort of lines. The jazz bass, I find myself taking more risks, maybe throwing more licks in, playing a little more aggressively. You can do both with either of these, right? I'm not saying that's true of anyone that plays one or the other, but I am saying that I do believe the necks of these instruments inform and inspire the musician in different ways. And I think it's important to mention because I think it's a big part of what makes these instruments different from each other. And I also think that these necks pair nicely with the pickups. So let's talk about the pickups. First off, it's, I used to think these were pickups, two pickups, but it's actually one pickup. There are two separate enclosures that are working together as a single unit. This is all of this together as the pickup. And it is a beautiful design. Hats off to Mr. Leo Fender. He had made so many innovations in his life, but this is certainly not the least of them. I think the P bass pickup is absolutely brilliant. And I'm not gonna get super deep into the science of pickups in this video, but if you wanna dig a little deeper on what makes pickups work and what makes them unique, actually Stringjoy has a really interesting article. Maybe we can put the link in the description because I was reading up on it today and it's absolutely fascinating. It's the closest thing to, to magic or to alchemy because it's like, if you think about what's happening is you're converting mechanical energy into an electrical signal through an electromagnetic field. It sounds like science fiction but it's it's science it's so cool and i think that's part of why i love music and i love gear is it's this really cool intersection of science and magic and i just think it's fascinating so if you want to learn more about pickups there's a really great resource that uh, maybe we can put in the description without getting too much into that it's important that you know that this is a single pickup it's a split single coil that's working together to cancel out a hum and have a really nice fidelity. It has a nice full picture of the sound. If you just turn it up, it sounds good. And I should say too, it's not just the pickup, but it's where the pickup is placed. If you look, it's about halfway between the neck and the bridge. If you think about a pickup, you can sort of think of it almost like a camera, a camera that's taking a picture of how the string sounds right here. If you aren't familiar, when you hit a string, it's vibrating all along the string and there are different overtones and harmonics that come out in different places along the string. So where you place a pickup on an instrument makes a huge difference in how it sounds because it's how the string vibrates right here. And the combination of this pickup design and where it's placed on the body is absolutely brilliant. Because when you turn up the volume, 
it's gonna sound good in a mix. And I find that's what people want out of a bass player. In the recording studio or in a performance, they wanna be able to turn up the bass and know where the note is, know where the fundamental root of the chord is, the building block of the song sonically, but not have that overtake or compete with the other elements. And I think that's part of what makes the P bass so special, so iconic, is the fact that the P bass, it just sits so perfectly in a mix. And I think that's a testament to the brilliance of the design of the P bass, of the pickup and the placement of the pickup, but then also that same sort of spirit of the pickup, I think pairs so nicely with the neck that we were talking about. The neck, it just feels sturdy and it sounds sturdy and it's just trusted and it's reliable. And I think that's part of why so many people love the P-Bass. And I think that's part of why I think I could go out on a limb and say, this is probably the most famous bass in the world. It's the bass that probably has been most purchased and most recorded throughout music history is probably a Fender Precision because I think it has such an elegant and simple and successful design. All right, let's talk about the pickups on the P-Bass's brother, the Jazz Bass. So if you notice, we don't just have one pickup in the middle like how we did on the P-Bass, we have two pickups here. These are wired in such a way that you can control them separate of each other. So we have a volume knob that's controlling the neck pickup, and then we have a volume knob that is controlling the bridge pickup and then a tone. So we don't just have one option like the P-Bass, we don't have two options. We actually have infinite options because now we can blend these together in any combination that we want. Like you can go fully open, both pickups wide open. You get this sort of scooped thing, right? There's like less mid information, a lot of low end, a lot of high end, very clear. Then if you roll the neck pickup off and you go fully bridge, you get this really like that really quacky, punchy, mid-rangey sound. And then there's all this variation between. That's part of why people love jazz basses so much is you can have a variety of sort of punchy sounds. And I think that's important to mention because it pairs nicely with that neck, remember? So I think what makes a jazz bass a jazz bass is this neck with these pickups. And I think what makes a P bass a P bass is this neck with this pickup. That's what makes them different from each other in the way that they sound and the way that they feel and in the way that they inspire. Now the question, the original question that we started with is can we make this sound like this? So I'm gonna try and do that. I'm gonna try and find the right combination and you can decide for yourself. Maybe let's start with everything all the way off. And let's bring the neck pickup all the way up. We have our tone down. So now we've got very dull sounding. Let's bring in the tone all the way up very bright. Let's go like right in the middle with the tone. That's sounding a little closer to P bass. And then the question that's going to be interesting to me is if we bring in this bridge pickup, are we going to get closer? So currently we have it at zero. Let's bring it up to maybe halfway. That's sounding jazz bassy to me, but if we roll it back a little bit. More. Also, I'm going to try and play closer to this neck pickup. Sounding pretty good. That's the neck pickup all the way on, and I'd say this bridge pickup at maybe 10%. This tone is like halfway. Bring the tone down a hair. I think that's as P bassy as I can get this jazz bass to sound. Oh, also while I'm at it, I should probably tell you about these basses just so you know, because this isn't a true apples to apples comparison. I'm getting as close as I can with the equipment that I have. But this jazz bass is a Nash, so this is a recreation of a 60s jazz bass and I've got string joy nickel wound strings on here brand new ones I put on right before I shot this video uh, and then it has Lawler pickups whereas this P bass this is a actual 66 P bass but uh, unfortunately somebody put active pickups in this bass before I got my hands on it so when I bought it I put Lindy Freeland pickups in this and these are sort of recreations of old school P bass pickups and I also have nickel wound string joy strings on this brand new same sort of gauge so now i've got this j bass dialed into sort of p bass mode and now we'll put them against each other and see how they actually sound here we go
So for me personally, after playing these basses and trying to get this one to sound like a P bass, I will say it does get close. It gets close. But even as close as I could get it, there is something that still just sounds jazz bassy to me about a jazz bass. There's something about the zinginess, about the string noise, about the something in the mid range. I don't know what it is. I can't like quantify what that is. It still sounds like a jazz bass to me. It sounds like a jazz bass doing a really good P bass impression, but it's still there. But maybe that doesn't matter. I think you have to decide what's important to you. Two iconic instruments, you can't go wrong with either. I'm not gonna tell you which one's better. I'm not gonna tell you which one to get. You have to decide for yourself. And I promise you, you would not be disappointed with either because a jazz bass and a P bass are both incredible instruments. One interesting thing I discovered while I was trying to make this video for you, I shot a lot of footage that I'm not showing you and I was playing different styles and I did a version of this where I was playing like really thumpy with my thumb and I found that the jazz bass is easier to conceal when you play that way because there's less articulation. Harder to tell that that's not a P bass. And then conversely, when you play with a pick, jazz bassiness jumps out. I think the articulation is what gives it away. So I think some of this depends on the sort of genre of music and the style that you're playing. I think that's part of why people that play a lot of slap bass love a jazz bass because you have that clarity and that articulation. Okay, there's another option that I feel like I need to mention, which is the PJ. What's that? Well, that's where you take a P bass and you put a jazz bass pickup close to the bridge. And the idea is you can get the best of both worlds. You can have that fundamental old school P bass split single coil sound. You can also blend in this punchy jazz bass bridge thing. And also it's really easy to swap out necks. You can unscrew the neck and put a jazz bass neck on a P bass body or vice versa. People have been trying all sorts of different combinations for a long time with this stuff. It might be a good option for you, but I do think there is something to be said about the purity and simple elegance of the original designs of how a P bass neck sounds and feels with a P bass pickup on a P bass body. And same with the jazz bass. Like I think there's a reason that they were designed that way. So, I don't think you should start out by creating hybrids. I think you should get to know both of these instruments on their own before you start combining them. But do know that that is an option if that's something that you're interested in. Oh, and by the way, my name is Philip Conrad. I'm a guest on the String Joy show this week. I'm incredibly thankful to be here. Thank you, String Joy, for having me on your channel. I also have a channel of my own if you're into nerdy bass stuff like this. It's Philip Conrad Music if you want to check that out. And a huge thank you to you for watching. I had so much fun, and I'll see you hopefully on another video soon.